Alrighty, One Needlesville, I have a small confession to make. Uh, I have been going a little bit haywire in pouring silver. Uh, I have two crucibles. You guys may have seen my video where I prepared my first crucible, which is this smaller one. And then today I prepared this big crucible and I did one pour with it. Uh, also, I have another confession, friends. I purchased the rolling mill, but I didn't want to tell you guys. I don't want you guys to make fun of me. But it was within my budget. It's a Vivor. It's this guy right here. Ugh. You guys know what I'm talking about. But uh, I have not mounted it, but I did put it together and I have rolled about four ingots out of it. I did a couple of these ones. I did this bracelet right here with one of these. And then I was like, yo, look at that side. Let's do a big one. So this jewelry adventure, friends, is the result of pouring this ingot. Now, I rolled it a little bit, but it was right in here, guys. Uh, 116 grams. So right now, I'm kind of in the process of rolling this out and getting it into making a boss bracelet. And I'm going to make a bracelet with a hinge. Like this has a hinge, except for it's not going to have a slide clasp like this. It's going to be a different kind of clasp. I don't know how it's going to be yet. I'm gonna roll this out a little bit. I'll take you with me over there just so you can see a couple rolls passes through the roller. My goals, guys, are to make a big, thick, hinged bracelet. I'm gonna make my own hinges. I need it for it to be about seven and a half inches all the way around to fit around my whole wrist. So let's go over to the rolling mill. Don't laugh that I have the cheaper rolling mill, but um, it's worked wonderfully for me so far the key is just work really slow have a lot of patience work really slow you guys will see that let's go over there and check that out alrighty friends we're sitting here right above the rolling mill um, I'm not gonna spend too much time right here because it's kind of boring to watch this process but I'm gonna do a pass through right here the middle is where it's really feeling like there's tension that's where it's thicker we're gonna do another one just to make sure that we're getting I had just annealed this. I have not mounted this this yet because I'm not sure where I want for it to be. But when I turn the knob, if you guys can see, this is how much I turn the knob, guys. From here to like that much. That's not very much at all. And then I'll give it another turn about this much. I'm just gonna keep doing this. And you don't really wanna have to really crank on this too hard, guys, because for, for one, it is kind of the, the budget um, version of the rolling mill. So you wanna be kind to the tool. So I'm just gonna work on this a little bit and then we'll bring you guys back. Right there. Friends, this is the roll out, a little bit over nine and a half inches. I would do about six or seven passes and then anneal six or seven really light passes and then anneal six or seven light passes i didn't nailed it a lot and it took a while to get to this point uh smash my finger really nice right there smash my thumb really nice right there because i'm an idiot don't do that guys be safe out there uh, i really enjoy the cracks i have some cracks in this i have a crack right there uh, a little chippy crack right there uh i guess i'm a crackhead because i enjoy the crack this is it i'm gonna start cutting this so if you guys see this I want for it to have this acute bend right here and then kind of slope down so that I can put my door and I don't know how I'm gonna make the door it's not gonna have a slide clasp I don't know how I'm gonna do it yet hey guys so we're gonna cross that bridge when we get there in this jewelry adventure but this is the boom clasp guys you guys know about this if you guys are familiar with the this is the prototype this is the very first one I ever made I got better at it but the design really never changed and when you when I put it on I always put it on with the hinge on the outside knuckle just just like that close it boom the clasp all the way to the catch there's a little stop right there and then this goes uh, so uh, i'm gonna cut this the appropriate length and with a two and a quarter inch door that's where we're at guys uh yeah keep leaning toward moving forward friends the back 
side design. It's pretty thick. I'm guessing it's about three millimeters thick. This is the top of it. It's gonna have that look. Very rugged. I'm gonna create my own hinges. And it's gonna have hinges. It's gonna have some kind of clasp. I haven't decided exactly yet. All right, One Needles I got my old hammer here that I got at the yard sale or at the secondhand store. We're gonna go right here. We're gonna do our stamping, guys. Nice and pressed, and just one into the groove, boy. And then I just kind of just really just be as methodical as I can. Get it right where I want it. I'll just basically do this action all the way, all the way through. Alrighty, one of those We're gonna go with the big stamps on this side. I, I did this side, and we're gonna go with big stamps on this side. That pitting, and I like it, so I'm gonna keep it because that's kind of what we have on this side. This is the side of the bracelet, as you, if you guys recall, right here. So we're just gonna make this match because this is the door. So big old hammer. So I'm gonna just make a bunch of those all the way through. You don't have to watch because it's really boring, but you guys get the gist of what I'm attempting to do here. Alrighty, friends, right here. Yeah, buddy. Let's bend. All right, guys, I did the bending. Now let's work on the hinge. So guys, I did, I got this 24 gauge and I put it in this and then I used this. Well, first I started with this one, I think. And then I just hit it with my mallet until it got like a taco. And then I found a smaller one. And then I used a, a nail, this nail. And I kind of went in there and then got it more like a taco. And then I found this, uh, just this needle file. I'm using this round part here. And now I'm really trying to get this to fold over because this is going to be the hinge. So we're just going like this. A seal. So guys, you see that? We're, we're, we're getting close. And this is probably a th too thick. This is not going to be the silver wire uh, thickness. It's going to be a little bit thinner. So it should be just perfect. So I'm going to go ahead and this is actually too long. So I'm really just focusing on a little part about that big. Maybe if I do this whole piece, I can have another hinge for maybe three more hinges. Would you let your mom-in-law judge that? Is that mom-in-law judgeable? That's not gonna hurt your feelings and make you get a divorce? I'm thinking yes. Look at that tube we just made, guys. So I'm gonna put a, a little, probably a thing of solder there eventually. Um, but yeah, I'm going to clean this up and, uh, that's going to be the tube for our hinge. And then I'll make some wire. Guys, that's a boss hinge. Yeah, we're going to do it. Three parts. Thick wire to go with a thick bracelet. And the hinge is going to be right there. I'm just going to open. Close. See, we're making it happen rapping, guys. We're not quitting. We're spitting. We're not quitting. We're spitting. We're not quitting. We're getting. We're not quitting. We're... All right, guys. I did put the hinges on. You could watch this video for how I did that, but uh, I didn't want to make the video too long. And I was thinking about what I'm going to do for this clasp, and in my mind, I have a new clasp idea that I want to share with you guys. So really, we're just going to go for it, and I'm going to hope for the best, and I don't know if this is going to work out. So disclaimer on that part, I'm not sure if it's going to work out, but I, I have, I kind of believe in myself and I'm going to sh bring you guys along. I, there's, there's going to be some bumps in the road. I can almost guarantee that, but we're going to work through them together and you guys will see the process and hopefully it will be a really cool idea that we can, uh, continue putting out into the world. You guys can try it and maybe I'll make more, who knows? 
This hinge, this is a nice big meaty hinge. I actually poured my own uh, little ingot and then rolled it into this wire. And I don't know what gauge the wire this is. It's not perfectly round. Um, just because I'm not very good at pulling wire yet. And that's another process I'd love to share with you guys as I get better at it. I hear lubrication, lubricating your draw plate is helpful or lubricating the wire. So there's a lot of stuff to learn, guys. Uh, pouring, rolling the silver, the process of annealing, how much it takes, what is what is it actually... We've seen the videos on YouTube where they roll the silver, they make it look so easy, and they're like, oh, now i got this beautiful sheet. Um, I might show you guys a little bit more of the gritty process the the real process of because it's not that easy maybe it's easy for them but i think for me it's not that easy and probably for you it's not going to be that easy because we're not professionals and we weren't trained uh, by professionals so sometimes we just have to do as much research as we can and then go out there and try it ourselves and so i'm going to try to make this as quick as possible you know how these videos are guys i'm i'm not here to waste your time but let's just uh let's get going with it let me explain to you maybe i can explain i'm, I'm not the best at explaining stuff what's in my brain but basically let's look at this i'm gonna make a t there's gonna be a right here's gonna be a like a, a sheath i'm gonna dig down down deep into this i'm gonna dig this out a little bit so it's recessed because if you look it's very thick i'm guessing this is maybe three millimeters thick and I'm going to make a recessed area, like a wedge, right in here like this. And then I'm going to put a sheath over the top of it. And it's going to have a groove in the sheath that goes like this. And the wire is going to be a T. The wire is going to be a T. And it's going to fit into that groove. This is the groove when it's closed. This will be the groove. And then we'll have... It's going to go like this. And the T is going to be in there and then when we want to slide it out we'll slide it out until it clears the sheath and then the t will be right here at that point and then we'll just kind of lift it and then separate that then the door will open like that boop and it'll close down on it then on this side of the t will be a ball that will sit up and then we'll do our uh our wire kind of i don't know how to draw this you guys know what i'm talking about though the wire with the hinge it has a little piece of tube right here it's kind of like a hinge tube this part this part, guys, right there, boom. It's going to have that, and it's going to sit over the ball ju just like this one is. And uh, once it's in place, it's going to sit, and it's going to lock it so it doesn't shift back and forth, just like it does on this one. But instead of being a slide, it's going to have a sheath, and that T is going to go in there. It's it's all in my head, guys. That's a terrible... Like, if I was an engineer, and I was like, yeah, follow those plans, you that would not work. So that's basically what I'm going to go with, friends. You guys are here for the jewelry adventure. Thank you for joining me. Guys, I have to give some shouts. I received uh, Buy Me A Coffees. I have a Buy Me A Coffee link because, you know, YouTube, when you have a small channel, you you don't make any money. You know, you do this for the love of the art and for the love of sharing. But uh, to uh, to encourage me to continue, I've received Buy Me A Coffees. I've received some coffees. Uh, Leisha bought me a coffee. And check this out, guys. A lady named Carol. Thank you, Carol, if you're watching. She bought me 10 coffees, guys. I got 10 coffees. Ooh, that's probably why I'm talking like this, because I'm really excited. And uh, Carol, because you bought me 10 coffees, I was just feeling extra super good. So I gave, uh, I willed, yellow willed, silicone willed Tito. This is my turtle Tito. He hangs out with me. Uh, Tito is uh, the name of uh, a cousin that I loved a lot that passed away. And I miss him. So I named it Tito. And the turtle has a known uh, different story behind it. But you guys aren't here to hear my stories. You guys are here to watch Jewelry Adventures. So let's start uh, digging into this. And let's just kind of get going. And we'll we'll make it happen rapid, man. So thanks for joining. Let's get to work. All right, guys. We're over here on the flex shaft side of the shop. So my goal right here, friends, is to take it down about one millimeter. One and a half millimeters. I'm going to go zzzz. Zzz. Guys, wear eye protection when you guys do this. Do this. I might stretch my own wire, so I don't know exactly what gauge it is, but the, the sheath is going to protrude. It's going to dome over, so it doesn't need to be too deep. Because it's not going to be flush. 
the, the, the sheath isn't. The sheath is going to dome over. Right, so we're just going to keep working. Ooh, it's getting warm. I'm going to keep working. I'll bring you guys back. Alrighty, friends. Look at this, guys. I have... If you guys can see in that... I have that little recess in there that I wanted. And just get a nice slope and just even out those rough wheel marks. I'm going to do this until a couple cows come home. I think we're about there, guys. So I'm going to go ahead and start fabricating the sheath that is also going to have the groove in it. All right, friends, just so you know what I'm doing, I uh, have this little piece that was actually a, a piece of the end of this, and I'm rolling it. I'm going to continue to roll it. I want this to be about 20 two gauge so that I can bend it and use it to create the sheath. So what I'm going to do is use poured silver. I made this in this hinge, made my own hinge tube, my own hinge tube. And now we're going to make our own. We're going to try to do, let's try to do all this with uh, our own stuff. Let's do the sheath in rolled, hand rolled, uh, well machine, mill rolled silver. So let's try to keep it as is uh, loyal to the soil, friends. Let's go. Not too much pressure on this. This is not the most expensive mill in the game, friends. I've only had it for a short amount of time, and I'm still having fun and getting used to learning how to use it. it does, it's better than hitting this with a hammer over and over and over again until I get it flat enough because that was hurting my ears and making my neighbors hate me. Alrighty, one of Roseville, here we are. Guys, uh, this is what I'm looking at. Now you can see the groove that I got in there. I feel pretty good about that. This is the sheet that we just rolled. And I'm trying to mock it up. Looking about... I think I'm going to have the tip of this kind of bent over. To keep the wire from coming all the way through. But I'm going to give it some extra movement. Or some extra play on both sides. Because the dome is going to take a little bit of the length away. So I'm just going to cut that out. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, oh, oh. The right stuff. K-N-O-T-B. K-T-O-K-O-N-T-B. N-K-O-T-B. New kids on the block. Now I can kind of visualize. Instead of doing that, let's do, let's do this. Let's give it a slight domage on the side. Sometimes I don't know what I'm doing until I start doing it, you know? I'm not going to take too much space. You guys see that right there, guys? Let's, let's start trimming this a little bit. Let's cut a little bit more off of this. Very long. Let's cut this off again right here. That looks a little bit more realistic. If we're uh, official like a military missile, we're close. But like, I want that exposed, that slope in there exposed a little bit because that's where the wire is going to feed down into. I need a little hangover here so that I could fold that over. Let me imagine a little divot right here. Just big enough for the wire to kind of recess into that. I'm going to cut that out now. Okay, you outlaw rebels out there. This is where we're at. I have this. I cut this groove. It's not very straight, but I'll fine-tune it later. And I'm going to bend that over 90 degrees. So this is a little tip that I learned from my buddy uh, Greg Greenwood. He has a tip to get a nice straight fold seam that uh, I'm going to show you guys in case you guys haven't already learned it from him. What he does is he gets a piece of wire and forgive me, Greg, if this is not the way that you, the way that you taught in your video, but I learned this by watching your video. So this is what I've retained. I probably, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of a C student. So I think my understanding of your technique is at least average. 
what he does is gets his wire probably the smart way to go about it would be to we'll tape it first and then get the wire right where you want it just like that and then what he did guys is he just hit it with the hammer And if you can see, it's scored for the bend. So let's uh, get some flat pliers and let's see if this is if this is going to work for us. Now I could have done a little better job. College push, and then what I like to do um, is get my put my pliers on the block and. Give it, the, give it a hit. Okay, looking at that, you see, you can see the score line in there. And you saw I got a nice 90 degree turn on that. And that score line, it bended, bent, bended right along that score line. And this is my vision. Something similar to this. Look at that, guys. We're going to throw some solder on that. My design is starting to kind of design itself at this point. Um, I'm going to make this a little shorter, but I'm going to bring it back. So this is about where I want the slope to be. Imagine this being a T on both sides. This is going to go in the slope underneath and slide in there. The T is going to make it so that it just stays flat. But you can see this lip right here needs to come all the way down probably for it to really have a good hang. Otherwise, it's going to kind of pop, be up at an angle like that. And I want for it to be flat like that, not up like this, flat like this. So I'm going to bring this, this line back that way. Yeah, so it's designing itself, guys. We're, we're getting there. This piece is not really designed to not come apart. It's just designed so that this latch doesn't flop open. Once it's locked in, it'll be locked in closed until you wanna open the door and let yourself out. Hey buddy, let's go. Guys, I'm getting a little bit excited here, man. I think this is gonna work. Let's just keep pushing. Alrighty, muchachos, this is where we're at right here, guys. I think I wanna dome this over a little bit, but in order to give it a kind of a, a sheath kind of dome edge, I'm going to have to make a little cut right here, I believe. I believe. So this stays flush. I'm give a little nip right there. And I'm going to give a little nip right here so that I, on the face of it. So when I dome it over, it doesn't affect the corner here. So I'm going to cut that and then we'll see if I'm correct in my assumption. Okay, we have the cuts right along the face, like in my vision. I'm sure there's some math magicians out there saying, no, you're doing, a, this is, that, you're, you, you, you know, you could have made your life easier. I'm like, make my life easier. <laughs> oh, the comedy. Why would I make my life easier? That is just ass nine. Nine asses. You can see I can almost get a, I want to get a pr fairly thick gauge wire in there. Let's do a little bit more. I can't hold out on you guys on what I'm trying to do here, guys. I do, I'm now using the flat nose pliers to get a uniform bend down, if I can. That looks like a nice bend down right there. I did it this side already. Let's go a little bit more. And now I have more access in here is what I want. And I'll, and I'll, and I'll smooth this uh, 90 degree angles off so that this not I mean, that's not too bad. And I can make that smooth too, but I'll just smooth those, kind of corner those a little bit. But we're getting there, friends. Yeah, that's what it is. Boom. Now, this may need to have more of a, a divot down in here. File a little, get a little square file or round file and just right in the very tip of it. So that when this comes across, it doesn't want to have that up angle. It's a lot better than it was, but I want for it to have more of an angle like this. And maybe I'll do that last. Maybe I'll solder it all together and then do that last because I don't want to make this too weak where it's starting to act squirrely when I start to solder it. 
because you know how little thin parts tend to melt when especially as he as hot as this is going to have to get or there's going to be a lot of mass here and i want to have good balance between this piece and this this thin little piece and this big thick mass i got to get the both temperatures to come together at the same time uh yeah i'm gonna fine tune and we'll uh, probably get ready to solder this bad boy on see what it does all right you animal lovers out there this is what we have we have the swoop uh, right here, I'm going to tin the underside of this first. This wire here just to prop it up at an angle so I can get that solder right in that place. I am going to go medium solder, friends. So what, what I really want to do is tin. Actually, I maybe want it like that. Just like that. Just like that. Right along that face. We want to set ourselves up for success. Don't play with me, Smokey. Okay, so we got that. Alrighty, One Eatlesville, I have us right here. Let's make our dreams come true. So we're gonna go ahead and get this kind of warm, the whole thing. We're gonna focus on the biggest mass first. I'm really going to focus on this end. I don't really care too much about this end. I'm going to get a little bit of the middle time, middle, middle part warm so that it's not too much of a hink sink, which is drawing the heat away from the area that we want it to, uh, the solder to run at. I am using medium solder. Good heat, good heat. Oh no. Okay. I must have got it shifted somehow. So sometimes this happens, guys. And I think, I think, I think, I think. I'm sorry, guys. I hope you guys are still watching. Okay, I'm going to look at that. I believe I saw the solder run on this side. I'm going to just let that cool and then I will probably give it a tap on the face and then heat it again because I don't think that the face is quite touching on that side, but on this side it is. So we're gonna let that air cool. Okay, here to uh, explore the results of our efforts, friends. Let's take a quick look at it before I start working on it. but. I kind of wish I would have made this slope a little bit more this way. So what I'm doing is I rolled this, uh, I took a chunk of this and I rolled it and then I flattened it because uh, this is now it'll fit in here because it wouldn't fit in there when it was round. So I made it flat. So I'm, go I'm going to <clears throat> connect it like a T I'm going to get a piece of this and then I'm going to solder the T and that will be that part of the clasp. So yeah, I had to flatten it. So, so in the future, <clears throat> think about your slope starting out here more. I'm going to clean this up a little bit. File. Wish I would have went a little bit further down right there, but c'est la vie, friends. C'est la vie. Alrighty, One Eatlesville. This is the... Where we're at at this point pretty good seal it's not perfect but for my first try i think i didn't do too bad of a job i am going to do like i said i was going to do earlier is a little indent right here so that that wire can sit that is what i'm looking for a little bit of a indent right there by this by this finger can go in and it can sit flat. Look at that, now it sits flat as opposed to sitting up like this, a little flatter. I think that might, if I need to adjust it a little bit more, I can. Okay, now let's make our T. Right now this is pretty thick. It has to be like this. Yeah, needs to be a little, that might work. I'm close, I might have to bore this a little bit more. Okay, friends, here we are uh, uh, gonna make the tea. We're gonna cut this according to the, 
the width that we think we're about going to need, but we're going to leave a little meat on it just so that we could fine tune where we think inside there's going to be. We will use our flush cutters. And then I'm going to look. So I, I hammered that down so that it kind of went down. Okay, let's file that flat. Pull it on my bastard file, just a few strokes. And then I will look at where this is going to be. That looks about good. I'm gonna solder that like that and that is gonna be our T. Okay, one Rosville, you know I can't hold out on you guys. Let's go right here, a little drop of flux right there. We are going to go hard solder, as previously mentioned. I have it angled like that on the Genius Wire, just so that I can have, um, because it kind of slopes and it needs, you know how it is, guys. You guys have to, you're always looking for the right angle. Okay, we're just gonna kind of, kind of low medium heat. I'm using acetylene uh, number three head, which I almost exclusively use. Okay, we got, did we get it? Okay, let's, I was always taught to pull your solder through to the other side, if possible. I'm gonna screw it up. Okay, pulled it through the other side. Yeah, I might, whenever I hammered that to be flush with this, I hammered it kind of wide because this side fits, but this side does not fit where I hammered it wide. So what I will do now is uh, file right there and uh, huh? learn. I, I, I should have filed it flat earlier before I put the T on, but this is why you're watching this so you know when it's your time to do this. I think some of this fine tuning is kind of valuable to share, friends. This is where I'm at. I put that line there because I know that's where the clearance for this T to drop right in there. And the T will go in there, but see, it's not quite fat enough right there. So this to be, so now what I'm going to do, is just get my flat file and just kind of just give it a little bit of, let's try this again. If you guys are with me okay now we have now it's down in there if you guys can see that pretty much like I want it see now I'm learning that if this is down like this this is going to impede so I know there's gonna be a little bit of a bend in this this is, this is gonna be kind of bowed over like that so I may have to put a little groove right here so that this has a little bit of clearance at least right there in the initial spot to be flush testing your hypotheses hypotheses test testing your hyp hypothesis hypothesis hypothesize Hypo i don't know singular for hypothesis or is that singular seems like it should be more than one hypothesis hypothi i'm gonna ch test my hypothi Put a little groove right there. I think it's gonna need a little groove right there. Mark. If I need to make an in, a cut, an incision, or an indention, I'm gonna start with an indention because I want to take less away than I that, as I can. I don't want to cut a big old cut all the way through this. If I can do it with a slope, I'll I'll find out sooner or later. Right here, guys, this is where I'm at. Uh, this slides. It's going to slide. So I angled this a little bit more, bent it down. The angle of this kind of went down. So I'm going to take my uh, pliers right here and just get this a little bit of a bend like that. 
How cool. Ooh, buddy. From mind to reality. Just like that. Let's keep working, friends. And look, that sits kind of nice on the profile. We'll make a tube to add right there. But we've got to make sure we put the tube in a place so that this still has enough room for the ball to go forward for it to make clearance. If the tube fills that spot between between the two black marks, I think that'll be just perfect for it to have just enough clearance to let go. And then it'll be connected as you open it. I don't know. Have you guys seen that before? I'm sure in antiquity they probably created it. Maybe we got down the street. Maybe he's doing it too. But uh, we're doing it too. Maybe our own way. Maybe improved. Maybe not as improved. Maybe we can see somebody else's design and say, hey, maybe there's some improvements to make on this. We'll find out as we get going. Let's keep pushing. I don't know why I even turned the camera off. Right now we're going to make the tube. So let's go right here. It's this right here. If I just cut this. Focus on that facing us because we can see it oh, man. this is not a tube making uh, video obviously because I barely know what I'm doing all right guys I made this really lousy tube right here and it will work I didn't solder it yet but it's, uh, I just kind of made it roundish and I was going to put a bead of solder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We need the, we need that play. So I'm going to solder this together, clean it up, get a nice, get it nice and roundy. And then we'll, uh, we'll hope that it's big enough. <sighs> bead of solder across that. Not very round, but let's clean the excess and see what we're working with. Okay, let's get this kind of roundy. Let's see if. Okay, guys, so that's it. That's our tube. Let's just mock this up real quick and see what we're working with. So we'll go a little shorter. Trim that down, clean it up. Let's go. Quick tip, guys. I'm cutting this tube, and I was carrying it. I was holding it in my fingers, and my fingers got tired. I thought, you know what? Let's use our brains. So I just put it in my ring mandrel. A ton more comfortable, friends. Alrighty, Juanitosville. Uh, this is where these two lines are right here. This is where I'm going to put the tube. I kind of mocked it up. Gave myself a little line here. This is when it's at its open. This will be about where the ball can be. I am going to uh, file the bottom of this flat. In between these two little spots right there, I'm going to file a little flat spot so that it's nice and flat right there so my tube it's really sits strong on there because that tube strength is very important that it's right there. All righty, friends. I think I have it about where I want it. Put a little flux right there. Did I get that? Am I tripping or am I dripping? I don't know. The thicker stuff, you might want to hold it in the water just a little bit longer because I have burned myself. It has stayed warm. Yeah, buddy. Okay, guys. That is it. Right there, we have this. This will be like this. This will lock in. All right, friends, I had a slight design flaw and I wish I would have showed you, but once this was in, in there, it was kind of wiggling back and forth and it was kind of hard to get it all lined up because I wanted to go left and right. So I decided that what I'm going to do is uh, take this off, shape, the back end of this piece more rectangular and then make the tube also rectangular but not so rectangular that it doesn't go into the groove up here so i'm just making it rectangular on the end end of it and then hopefully that rectangle will hold it in a place where it maintains its orientation Alrighty, friends uh this is where we we where we are at at this juncture 
I, I put this uh, tube, I left it a little, like I said, a little tri uh, uh, rectangle-ish, hoping that once this is open, once this opens, that it will maintain its relative positioning and that is what we have right there guys so uh yeah so that's it so now you know the next step is to to add the ball to the back end guys you guys know what this is this is this is how we do it here we go guys we're gonna get expose a little of the metal right here let's do a little drop of flux right here we're at the tail end of this party, friends. A little bit of a heat sink on this side. We're just gonna get this kind of toasty in this general area so that everything is feeling like it wants to cooperate. Here we go. And look at this. Okay, I think I got it to lay down, guys. Boom. I'm gonna let that air cool and I'll bring you guys back. Alrighty, Juanitosville, this is where we're at. I made this tube, and I used this this uh, nail, and I just kind of bent it like a taco using this tool first in here. And it was still kind of big. So then I just kind of slowly started with my mallet, just hitting it around this on my metal block. And now I have a nice piece of tube. It's what's going to hold the pin in place when it's locked in. So I'm thinking about maybe right there. Now you got you want to remember that when you put your tube on friends, you want to leave a little gap. You don't want it for it to be at the very end like that because the wire will come out a little bit. So you leave a little bit of a gap so the wire has a place to kind of bend through so it doesn't protrude outside the outside parameters of the bracelet. Do I sound smart? I think I sound, sound a little too smart. I don't like it. Okay, Juanitosville, we're at the tail end of this adventure. We're looking at this right here. Open it, press down, boom. And it's in its most closed state is where the wire is, where it needs to be locked in. Where am I gonna put the, the tube? I was thinking maybe in this area right here. Let's look at this side to side. Okay, so my goals are on this one, friends, is I'm going to heat it and then I'm going to put a little piece of solder right under there and hope that it... Uh, and I want to stay away from this hinge, which is hard soldered. This right here, we're going medium solder. It's our last solder of the job, of the project, last solder of the project. You know how it is. Did I even flux? Because that is going to give me no chance of success. Just like that. We're going to bring good heat here. Bring it back. Bring it back, friends. Bring it back. Surgical. Let's get surgical. This to be back towards the end of the stamp here because we're doing our best to stay away from this hinge right here guys and if that's the case sometimes you can just put a heat sink on it cover it maybe did that go how about a feeling that went guys that's on there good guys I didn't see the solder run, but it was right under there on that seam. I think we got a good seal there. We're going to go ahead and throw this in the pickle, set the hinge, and then we'll get ready to see what we have. Alrighty, you wild animals. This is where we are, guys. I have this. This is, I think we're ready to set the hinge. Get it to align. Sometimes if I get it aligned, I'll just go like this. Get it all the way through. Now this top piece, I want for it to be a little process a little bit. There you guys, see that is all it takes for it to mushroom just enough so it won't go through. Like that. We have a nice smooth spot right there. 
while it's out here I'm just gonna run it over a little bit of sandpaper just to whatever little edge might be that then here we can cut this off millimeter or two millimeters out and then we'll mushroom that in too about like that a little meat right there and then we're gonna give it the old cross hatch Okay guys, let's take a look. Mushroomed right here, mushroomed right here. Hinge, legit. Let's try this. The old maiden voyage. Oh yeah, buddy. Yeah, yeah. Click over, lock that in. Oh, it's time to take it off. Click, click that off. Boom. On. Off. I'm excited. I'm excited. All right. So let's go. We'll close it at its full closing point. And then we will take our wire that uh, we have right here. Stretch. This is actually from scrap. Also, this whole thing is made from scrap. Uh, we silversmithed and fabricated this whole thing from uh, just with our dreams, friends. Just with our dreams. Let's go. This doesn't have to be perfect. Oh, yeah. That was not perfect. That f broke off. That was not soldered on all the way. I thought that was the this was the end guys. Now I have to go through take this I have to do it with the hinge on now. That's why I don't do the hinge until the very very end. Dude this blows. I might have to come back at this at this tomorrow guys. I think <clears throat> I think the jewelry gods are laughing at me right now and telling me to Go get some rest. Right here, just making the wire for the uh, the latch clasp. I'm not very good at this either, so I don't really show a lot of this, but my roller mill makes it kind of square. And then I'm just running through this a few times. Slowly get to the, the size that I need. And I think this is about it. All right, friends, I had a casualty. My uh, hinge came off. So I put this angled like this. I tried to do it where it's sitting up and then I put the hinge on top. But everything got so hot, the wire, and the tube in the back that holds the latch wire came off. So that came off. This came off. I was like, you know, man, this is so frustrating. But I have it marked up like I have it launched up like this. I put a piece of 24 gauge underneath the heavy part so that the the hinge tube didn't sit too high. So the hinge tube kind of sat a little bit recessed. Um, I'm looking at it and I think we have good. I brought you right at the time that we're going to try to make our dreams come true, guys. I, I have been fighting with this uh, since last night. And I, I at one point I was just like, you know what, I'm going to go to bed because... I'm not doing any better. My solder bowl had run out. I was dipping around for little tiny eensy beensy pieces of solder because I was too exhausted to like put down my torch and cut some more solder. And I was like, okay, this is not good. I'm not in the place to uh, make my dreams come true right now. Mentally, like enthusiastically, inspirationally, man, I was with it. I was, I was gung ho. But um, I think physically and concentration wise i was dusted man burn out homes so i'm going to put a couple pieces right there i try to heat sink this uh hinge when i put that back tube on i try to put a piece of metal on the hinge or to block the fire from really getting there but this big mass gets so hot at the same time that everything 
So I'm learning that when you're going little mass on big mass, it can be really tricky, especially when you have multiple solder. I've never, working with uh, 20, 22 gauge, 18 gauge sheet, I've never had parts fall apart in the, in the uh, succession solder jobs. So, you know, I'm learning. Okay, do I believe in that? Am I gonna flip it over and try to pull some from the other side? I don't know, let's take a look. I don't know if I should, guys. I don't want this to fall off, you know? But since it's hot, maybe I'll just give it a number. We'll see what it does. Hopefully it doesn't fall off. It's ugly under underneath which is fine. If it's going to be ugly, we want it to be ugly under here. I'll, I will clean that. You won't be able to tell, but look how clean that's going to look on this side. Heck yeah, boys and girls. Let's go for it. Okay, friends. We're at the final state here. I have flux right here. This is the last piece of solder. If everything stays where it needs to stay, I should be fine. This is my little mushroom head that we made. And I'm going to put it right at the very end. Very nice. Very nice, guys. Woo! Okay. And I, I stretched this piece of wire here. And this is going to be the wire for the latch. It's uh, longer than it needs to be, but that's good. Alrighty, Juanitosville. We are here, guys. I have the two pieces. Um, we're going to go ahead and set this hinge. Once I set the hinge, I am going to set the wire. Sorry guys, sorry, sorry. So I'm gonna go on this side first. I'm just gonna mushroom this a little bit. Okay guys, so that's where we have right there. Not much play, very... Uh... Remember guys, when you uh, do this, in some ways, if you have a nice good uh, strike on it, it will f fatten up the tube a little bit. Um, so just be kind of make, don't have it so tight in there that you don't have any room for, for the tube to kind of expand a little bit if it wants to. Because you can make it where it expands so much that you're, it puts a lot of torque on your hinge trying to open and close it. I mean, you can do it just slowly uh, and then eventually it'll work itself open. That's where we want it. And then the next step, guys, you guys know this, is this wire. Feed this wire through. Last time I did this, guys, this, this broke off and then everything just started. It was a disaster. So let's just pray. Kind of work it, get these silver used to kind of being friends with each other. I'm gonna take this to the soldering block. I'm gonna set it like this, probably on my third hand, and then just put my flame that way, make a little ball right there, and then we'll start to bend this in, and then we'll be close, really close. Alrighty, Juan Rosville, thank you so much for joining me uh, for one of the most painful jewelry adventures that I've had in a while, guys. I have to be honest with you guys, the clasp. I don't know what to call this. Uh, if you guys are familiar with a similar class, please give me a, a link or share the artist who may have also done this because uh, we're out here flying by the seat of our panties, guys, and we're just making it happen. Rapping, guys, right here. Oh, man, thank you so much for hanging out. Uh, one more time, big shout out to Carol for buying me 10 coffees and Leisha for buying me a coffee. Link in the description if you want to buy me a coffee and encourage me. Uh, don't encourage me too much. Uh, my mom and dad want me to get a real job or at least get a job. Or they, they just want me out of the basement. But uh, yeah, guys, uh, thank you so much for uh, all the support, all the uh, subscribers that we've had and all the comments and feedback. Always positive. Uh, I think I've had... A couple uh, 
negative comments but you know out here in these mean streets when you're out here making your dreams come true sometimes people don't like to see that guys please hit like on the way out uh if you're interested in the boom class watch this video i'll have a, a link at the or the video at the end of the after the jury video debut if you want to see how i made this suggested videos i'll have that and also have a uh, probably a hinge video i did a hinge video uh, that if you don't want to, if you guys just want to get straight to the hinges, uh, you guys can see the hinge video uh, there, and uh, I'll probably have that in that in that section too, guys. So thanks for hanging out, guys. Uh, if you guys ever want to kind of hang out with the dorks, you can come to the dork lunch table where I'm hanging out. I have a stain on my shirt too, so if you have a stain on your shirt, uh, you know nobody's gonna judge you. Uh, we like to eat uh, ruffle sour cream cheddar sour cream ruffles. So, uh, yeah, if you have a bag of ch sour cream ruffles, and if you don't have any, come on over. I'll share with you. I'm not scared. Uh, yeah, guys, please hit like on the way out. Did I already say that? And I uh, hope you guys are out there making your dreams come true, your jewelry dreams specifically come true. And, uh, yeah, just making it happen all day long, singing a song, leaning toward moving forward, hanging on like a hubcap. Oh, hanging on like a hubcap in the fast lane. I'm Benny. I'm out. Peace. This is the clasp that I was uh, that we worked on. This is it at its close. I'll put it on so you guys can see how it works. But this opens. Hold this, and the door opens. Close it, just like that, guys. Let's try this on real quick, just to make sure we're not phony baloney over here in the neighborhood. Over. It's down. Click it. Boom. Bam. Look at that, friends. Oh man. <laughs>